that let us discuss about strategic approach to software testing so why we are doing testing in order to find errors right so we can define testing as process of executing a program in order to find errors to make our software perform well it should be error free so that's the reason why we are uh, executing program to check whether the program is having any errors or not so if it is error free then software can perform well if testing is done successfully it will remove all the errors from the software so that's the importance of testing so it is mainly used to remove errors from the software so testing is set of activities that are planned in advance and all these activities should be conducted systematically and here number of software testing strategies have been proposed so all these uh, testing strategies they provide you with a template of testing as well as they come they came up with various generic characteristics so all these uh, software testing strategies they follow the generic characteristics and let us see them so in order to perform effective testing first you need to conduct effective technical reviews so technical reviews should be conducted effectively because then only we can perform effective testing so by doing this by following this approach many errors will be eliminated before starting testing testing always begins at the component level so if you divide a project into multiple components or multiple modules so first it starts begin or it begins at the component level so first uh, testing will be conducted on one component and then will integrate all the components after integration again testing will be performed on the entire computer based system different testing strategies are appropriate for different software engineering approaches so based on the type of approach you need to apply that particular soft uh, that particular testing technique and they can be performed at different points in time so who will conduct this testing so it depends on the type of project say if your project is small then in that case a single developer of the software can perform testing so testing is conducted by the developer of software if the project is small say suppose if your project is large then this developer alone he can't perform testing so we need a group so independent test group will conduct testing for large projects so this testing and debugging they are actually different activities but debugging it must be accommodated in any testing strategies so here coming to verification and validation so what we'll do in this so verification and validation it's a process of investigating whether the software system satisfies specifications and standards and fulfills the required purpose or not it can be defined like this so it's a process of checking that software achieves its goal without any bugs so our main task is to build a software or build a software which achieves its goals and that soft software should be error free so it's a process to ensure whether the product is developed the whether the product which is developed is right or not so you need to verify whether the product which is developed whether it is right or not it verifies whether the developed product fulfills the requirements uh, requirements which are given by the customer so during requirement analysis customer will provide his requirements right so during verification it uh, this this stage or this step it verifies whether the developed product fulfills all the requirements suggested by the customer or not so simply we can say that verification is nothing but it's a static testing and the second one is validation so 
we can define it as it's a process of checking whether the software product is up to the mark or whether the product has high level requirements. And it's a process of checking the validation of the product. That is, it will check, uh, it checks what we are developing is the right product. So what we are doing here, this using validation, we can check validation or we can check. Uh, so this is a process of val checking the validation of the product. So it will check what we are, uh, whether the thing, uh, the product which we are developing is the right product or not. So it is a validation of actual and expected products. The product uh, which is expected by the customer as well as the product which is developed. Validation is also known as dynamic testing. So remember that verification should be done after validation. So verification is followed by validation part. And during this validation testing, we examine whether we have developed the product right or not and also about the business needs of the client. Next one is software testing strategy. Here, yeah, if you observe this image, this is in the form of a spiral, right? So here, unit testing, this is called as vertex of the spiral. So it's unit testing begins at the vertex and it mainly concentrates, this unit testing, it concentrates on each unit. So here, unit can be component which we use in the code or the class which we write inside the code. Next, uh, testing progresses by moving forward. So here testing progresses like this along the spiral to integration testing. So here focus is completely on design. So you can see corresponding to integration testing there is design. So in integration testing focus is on design part and construction of the software architecture. Next, again, if you move inward, then you can see validation testing where the requirements established as part of requirements modeling. So they are validated here. So all the requirements, so in validation testing, these requirements, they are validated. So they are validated against the software that has been constructed. And finally, from here you will move to this system testing where software and other system elements. So everything. So here software as well as system elements, they are tested as a whole. So we are testing the complete software here. So to test a computer software, you spiral out in a clockwise direction uh, along the streamlines that broaden the scope of testing with each turn. Testing within the context of software engineering. This is actually series of four steps that are implemented sequentially. So here we need to implement four steps and Initially, these tests, they focus on every component individually. So first, we are going to perform testing on each component so that we'll be able to know whether that function, uh, that component is working properly or not. So that kind of testing is called as unit testing. So if a test is performed on single component in order to check whether it is working properly or not, then that kind of testing is called as unit testing. After that, here we are testing each component separately. So after testing all the components, they are assembled or 
integrated so in order to uh, all the components are integrated together which gives us complete software so after uh, after integrating the components again testing will be conducted so that type of testing is called as integration testing so this integration testing it mainly solves or uh, it solves the issues associated with problems of verification and program construction so as we conducted testing on the complete system or on the complete software this validation testing it provides us final assurance so it tells us that the software which is developed it is it meets all the requirements so like informational functional behavior and performance requirements and one last step is so after validation so here the last higher high order testing step falls outside the boundary of software engineering and into the broader context of computer system engineering so software once it is validated it should be combined with other system elements so here system elements can be either hardware people or databases so software which is developed or which is validated it should be combined with all these things and system testing should be conducted which verifies that all the elements they work properly and overall system function or performance is achieved so these are the four steps that should be implemented sequentially so first you need to perform unit testing followed by integration testing then validation testing and at the end we'll do system testing in order to ensure that overall system performance is achieved next one is criteria for completion of testing so test completion this is actually considered as the last step of uh, software testing life cycle uh, where we'll finalize all the testing activities and document the results so here our main goal is to ensure software product is ready for product release and uh, so we'll perform various activities here that is first we'll verify that all the test cases have been executed and after execution you need to analyze the test results in order to check whether there are any defects in the results or not so if there are any any defects then you need to prioritize so say if there are 10 defects then based on the priorities you need to resolve or fix those defects next generate a complete uh, test completion report and after that you need to communicate or you need to give this test results in the form of a report to stakeholders then one question uh, which arises here is every time when the software testing is discussed so the main question is when we are when are we done with testing so okay so during the testing uh, test completion phase we'll do all these things okay after doing this can we say that we are done with testing so how do we know that whether uh, we tested everything correctly or not or the whether the testing which is performed is enough so for that one response for this question is so here we uh, we can't say that we uh, are testing so we completely tested the software effectively because uh, you are never done with testing so it's it simply we can say that the burden shifts from software engineer to end user okay you may be successful in uh, achieving the thing or uh, you may not find any error during the testing phase but when it reaches the end user so he'll be working with that software every day sometime so he may face some issue with the developed product or developed software so at that time again he may find some uh, defects in the code so there are chances for that also right so every time when the user executes a software or a computer program for program being tested so that means uh, there shouldn't be any fault or he should not face any problem while working with the software so that is again uh, if he finds any problem in that 
then we can uh, we we are uh, not successful in testing so there is no ending for this testing phase if he finds any problem again he'll approach in software engineer right again uh, he need to resolve that defect and another response can be you are done with the testing phase when you run out of time or run out of money say suppose the given scheduled time for testing expired then in that case what what can be done here so you are done with testing so you can't uh, extend the time further as well as uh, when all the test cases execute without detecting any errors then also you need to stop or when the test cases are unsuccessful then again uh, there is no option then also you should stop or when you run out of money then also you can't proceed further so some people they say that uh, by using statistical modeling or uh, software reliability theory so we can predict the completeness of testing 